Okay, shading, hatching, cross hatching, and stippling. We're starting with shading. You'll notice on the lighter ones, if you don't turn your pencil around on the paper, you do the turnaround in the air and just kind of skid along the paper, it gives you a little bit more even line. It kind of gives you a light start, light end, instead of a dark start, dark end to the line. And you can fill in a little bit more carefully that way uh, along the edges of the shape. I kind of plant that pencil down there and then pull it in to create those edges. Make it nice and even across the entire box. Something to be careful of is not to do the back and forth, back and forth and create these waves uh, where you're just zigzagging a tight zigzag. You create these dark waves in there and that, that's inconsistent. The way, yeah, no, we don't want that. The uh, the way to get around that is to do sort of a mini back and forth within the larger back and forth. So between the top and the bottom of that rectangle, I'm doing a lot of little back and forths. That puts all the turnarounds scattered throughout. Each time you turn your pencil and change directions, you want to scatter it throughout the shape that you're filling in. You also, as you're shading, create this sort of flat spot. And on uh, counter to the flat spot is a pointy spot, which you can use to get those tiny little spaces around the edges. So when you're doing the back and forths, you get close to without crossing the edges as well as you can. And use that sharp part then to catch all the little bits and pieces around the edges and make nice, neat, tidy edges, hopefully not going over the line too much. So smaller back and forths within the larger back and forth, scattering those turnarounds all about so that you don't create lines with them or rows or waves with the, with the turnarounds. You want them all over the place so visually you don't really see the turnarounds. And again, find that sharp point, go back in, and really make your edges nice and tidy so that you fill in the entire rectangle or square evenly. hatching, you want to do a comfortable repeated motion, almost like if you're stirring a pot or, or whipping eggs or whipping cream, that sort of same hand motion, where you're just kind of doing a circular hand motion that skids along the paper for a short distance repeatedly. Uh, so it, it becomes a nice comfortable circular motion where you're tapping along the paper. Um, it's not a loud tapping, but a repeated motion that fills in the space. The more densely you fill in the space, the darker it will appear. Same with cross hatching. Uh, you just allow yourself to move in two different directions, or some people are three directional cross hatchers. Generally, your hand can kind of comfortably do that repeated motion in two to three directions. Two is most common. And the, again, the more densely you put those marks on there, the darker it will appear. So repeat, 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 and do make it a comfortable motion. Don't make the lines too long because then it's hard to fill it in. Even. 
Stippling is just the same idea as hatching but repeated dots. And you can almost make it a miniature hatching um, as long as you keep it like a millimeter or smaller. Uh, repeated tapping on that paper, repeated dots, the more densely packed, the darker it will appear. Now I know it is very tricky to try to fill in these large areas so you may split a few and just do a very light area and four distinct shades of darker area to make it a little bit easier on you. There's a little time lapse and ta-da! When you're done, you should be able to see distinct steps between all the shades, whether they're done in hatching, cross-hatching, shading, or stippling. Each step should be visible and distinct from its neighboring steps.